DaVinci Resolve 19 has a bunch of new features and improvements to the shape system inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion. We are still missing some features that we did want to see in this update. Historically, Blackmagic Design has added new features and tweaked stuff from the first public beta to the full release. So even though they didn't announce stuff at the event, they might still add it before it comes out into the 19 full release. Let's talk about all the good stuff right away. The S text node. This is going to be awesome. Inside of Fusion, we can just add in the S text node, put that into an S render, and now we have native text support inside of the shape system. If you've watched my video on Vector inside of Fusion, you know that the normal text plus node works in Vector until it leaves the node. This expands on that, passing that Vector data outside of the node and just sends it off to rest of the shape system. William Justice found a great use for this just by adding in a S outline node. This means after the fact we can add in an outline to the text and do cool stuff with changing the position and length sliders. It's also really good for just simple stuff like animations, being able to scale it up after the fact in unison with like a star, a rectangle, circle, whatever shape you might want to use. Another thing that I noticed in this update that wasn't really talked about is now the viewer controls work so much better. So previously the S rectangle, you couldn't get stuff to move around right, but now you can just click in here, you can move it, it all works, you can just move it around. It's just a minor quality of life thing that makes a huge difference. Another thing we have is under the style tab, we have the opacity feature. This is again just a really simple, subtle change, but it makes a huge difference. There's also a new S B spline tool, which is going to work just like the normal B spline node. So this is very similar to like a polygon, so I can draw a shape, but it's automatically going to smooth the path out no matter what I set this to. So if you just want to create some smooth, abstract shapes, this is a great way to do it. Another cool thing that they talked about is being able to use paths with the duplicate nodes. So if I add in a S duplicate node, we can up the copies, change the X offset, you know, do all that stuff that we normally would do. But now we can come down and do duplicate along path. When I do this, I can just draw in the viewer and it's going to duplicate all these items along the path. One thing to point out is you want to make sure that you start with this ellipse in the center of the screen, because if this is moved off to the side, it's just going to offset the whole path. And then when you go to draw the path, it can be really weird. That threw me for a loop at first. But once you do that, you have a bunch of controls like being able to offset it along a line as well as change the displacement between each one of the objects. There's a lot of really cool stuff to do with that one feature alone. Okay, another cool thing is a simple change to the S Boolean node. What this node allows us to do is combine two different shapes in a unique way. The way it worked in the previous version, you could add it in between two shape nodes, and viewing it shows a combined version of those shapes. But under the S Boolean under style, this overrides the color, even if we don't want it to. Now under the controls tab, in addition to the different operation modes, we can change the style. So we can change it from replace to keep. So as we cycle through these, you can see it's going to keep the style of the shape that is currently visible. Again, just a really nice quality of life upgrade. Okay, on to some of the bad stuff, the stuff that has not been addressed yet. First up is not having the option to link the X and Y size in the S transform node. This is one of those time saving features, but this one would save the most time out of any of the other ones that we talked about. And unfortunately, we still don't have the option to use gradients inside of the shape system, as well as other modifiers like a soft edge, a shadow, something like that. The S duplicate node also does not have a time offset yet, like the normal duplicate node does. And finally, we do not have any native SVG support. When you go up to Fusion, come down to Import SVG, it still imports that into the old system. Check out my video on importing SVGs for a trick to kind of get around this. One thing that makes me a little bit hopeful is the new multi-poly tool. This has no purpose in the shape system because it's meant for just creating a black and white mask. But if you look at the polygon list, this is very similar to the mock-up I made in my What I Want to See from Fusion 19 video. This would be a great foundation for a SVG node. So one can hope at least. And again, and all of this is beta software, so so much can change before the final release. There's going to be a lot of bugs that you run into, so do not download it if you need stability when you're editing. But overall, I think this is a great update and we're moving in the right direction. If you guys have any questions, let me know.